So, uh, to end the morning session, I'm delighted to invite Nick Peckford, who, Professor Nick Peckford, who's the Pro Vice Chancellor here at Bournemouth and Head of uh, Research and Enterprise, to talk to you this evening. Thank you all, and um, I want to introduce you uh, to the university this morning. I'd like to say officially welcome to you all to, uh, to Bournemouth. Uh, that makes you feel a little easier. We also are the Bristol of Dorset. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to talk really for 15, 20 minutes on uh, a university perspective on this thing, our education, business collaboration. I'll draw on information from surveys uh, and reports that have been done by Universities UK to sort of paint a fairly broad picture. I'll sort of focus in on the last few minutes of the talk to talk about some things we're doing locally around, uh, around uh, this, 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 this agenda. I think the first point I want to make really is that number one bullet there, that we are businesses in our own right. Um, and often that, that is missed in the conversations that we have with uh, the people like yourselves. And there's a point in the case in point, this university has a turnover of about 120 million. You know, we employ over 2,000 people, one of the larger employers in this, uh, in this particular conurbation. And we know that our net contribution to the local economy is something like 250 million pounds a year. So you know, we are serious players in, 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 as, as business things in our, in our own right. Um, and the university, unlike a school or a hospital or maybe the military, doesn't get all its money from the government. You know, we're about 45-48% of our income is from government sources. The rest of it is from um, other income streams, uh, from industry, from student, <coughs> from the NHS. So a good model for university isn't like a, an organisation sat there waiting for the cheque every year from you know, Her Majesty's government. It's something maybe you know, more like BAE systems where you have a client portfolio and we're in the market for over half of our income. So really if you're in the market for half of it, you may as well be in the market for all the philosophy that's starting to permeate now into universities. Uh, and it's, uh, it's an interesting one and it will develop and mature over the next five or ten years. Um, if you aggregate up universities in general, what do we do to the UK in terms of our um, uh, economic impact? Well there's a number there, 45 billion is the contribution that universities make every year to UK PLC. It's bigger than agriculture. Nationally, it's probably bigger than farmer. Okay? So that's about 100 or so organizations generating that. So you know, we are, in ourselves as an industry, uh, an essential part of, of the UK economy. And of course, we're now under new management, as of uh, last week. DIU, US Department of Innovation University and Skills, uh, 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 only two years was, was kind of rather unceremoniously dumped, closed down, whatever's happened to it, I'm not really quite sure. But it's now been um, Universities are assumed under something else called BIS, which is Business, Innovation and Skills. And we'll perhaps come on to that point a bit later, because it sent some ruffles uh, across the sector. Get that right. Okay, so why do universities engage with business? Well, there's a thing called enterprise, there it is. Um, and it's kind of sandwiched in between those, you put a point at the top, which is, you know, we force increasingly and rightly, I think, to diversify our income streams through activities which are outward facing, which aren't related to money from research councils or from um, government grants and teaching. Also, enterprise feeds back into the classroom, and so the last bullet point there, it does enhance the student experience. But what is it? Okay, so that's what the middle slide there, the middle bullet point shows, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that universities get involved with around the enterprise agenda. There's consultancy, there's CPD, which is professional development short courses, contract research, <coughs> so we've got a big deal from the BAE system. Rolls-Royce have given us some money to do a <coughs> contract research, for example. <coughs> Idea exploitation and commercialization, we've heard about KTPs, the spin-outs and spin-ins. So all that stuff is going on across the university sector, and it's at various levels of development. So some universities are more mature in some areas than others. None of us have got it right yet. We're all struggling finding our way. Um, but all of those things together are increasingly important, perhaps even fundamental to the missions of some, maybe all the universities in the future. So just some facts and figures, and, uh, and I've kind of lost it, because if I point to one slide, half of you will see it and half of you won't. So but what I want to add, is there a laser thing here? Yes, there is. Oh, that's it. Oh, I'll, see, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do some joint. Okay, so thank <laughs> 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 What the plot shows is, um, is a compilation of, of, of things. It's income on the y-axis there in millions versus the timeline, 2003, 4 to 2006, 7. Uh, and this is data that's gathered by the government centrally for all of the universities in the UK. There's about 100 or so universities contribute to these figures. And it's what we call enterprise and throwing it universities, broken down by those things mentioned earlier. So contract research, collaborative research, CBT, etc. 
I guess some headline figures we can draw out of this data analysis is that this training aspect, the CPD, is growing by 50% from 03, 04 to 06, 07. Contract research and is up 25%. The IP income, which is this line here at the bottom, I'll talk about that in a second in a bit more detail, is not really taking off in the way that um, universities thought, or certainly some government departments might wish it to do so. So, you know, what, why? What's going on in this? Quite interesting. <coughs> If you look at it in, in, in a bit more detail at the headline figures, let's just take a couple of them. So this, this graph here shows you um, each of those income streams broken down, and perhaps you, you can't see it so often in the back, but by who's paying for this activity. So contract research consultancy, CPD, these three things contribute um, the, 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 the majority of, of, of um, enterprise income into universities. But most of these, most of the income is actually not through um, SMEs or other non-SMEs, it's due to blur that because these data will be based on an SME with 250 staff. We now know from 10 minutes ago it's now 500 staff. Um, most of the income from these three streams comes from non-commercial organisations still, except the NHS, charities, etc. Although the growth is growing, this is, shows consulting income of 100% increase in seven years. But these black, behind these black bars, what's making it up is a mixture of SMEs, uh, non-SMEs, and um, uh, non-commercial organisations, non-commercial organisations organizations dominate the income. Now, just stepping back a bit, we can benchmark our university and universities in general against these over, uh, overarching metrics. Uh, and this is just one of them. This shows you CPD uh, over the period from 2005 to 2007 for a university grouping called the Alliance. Okay, so again, another trend in universities over the last I don't know, four or five years, it's, they form different gangs, okay, depending on their sort of mission statements. The one that you'll probably know about is the Russell Group, which are the elite research universities, Oxbridges, um, uh, Southampton, just up the road, etc., Bristol. Um, there are others. We're at this university, <coughs> called the Alliance University Group. Um, there's about 20 or so groups uh, in different universities in the Alliance Group. And the ones in the southwest area are Gloucestershire, down here, um, here's Bournemouth, here's Plymouth. Uh, and UWE. So four Southwest universities are in this alliance group of, uh, of universities. And this just shows you uh, um, how CPD income to these universities has fared from 0506 to 0607. So 0506 is the blue bar and 01 is 0607. By university, and this is in billions up here. So this university here, Bournemouth, well, we're okay. We're getting about to three and a half million pounds CPD income every year. Slight growth. Um, uh, between 0506 and 0607. The big hitters up here, not even Trent, for instance, their CPD is nearly about 11 million. Okay, so there's a lot of scope for university to move up in this direction. There's a lot of scope for not even Trent to lose it, lose business. Lose it. So these kind of benchmark um, things are, are drawn up by the government, and every year they help allocate funding to universities for business facing activities. So the better you do on these graphs, basically, the more money you receive essentially from government to help pump prime initiatives working um, with businesses. 